Hi everyone, this is Lauren, your sewing buddy. Today we're continuing work on the Elven Wrath vest for the Secret Santa. Um, today I'm making the bias tape for it out of this silver satin. It's not a very easy material to work with, but it does what I need it to do and has the look that I want, so that's what we're going to do. Um, and the way that I make bias tape is a no waste method, so nothing gets tossed away. Um, I'm making it out of a full square of fabric. Doesn't matter how big of a square, um, but I think for this one I'm doing 22 inches just because that's how far I wanted to deal with. Um, as you saw in my uh, sewing room tour video, my space is kind of limited on the floor, so dealing with larger cuts of fabric can get bothersome. Uh, so just measure the 22 inches across and then 22 up and then once that's squared off I'll be able to cut out that square. And I thought that I could be tricky with this like I was uh, with some of the skirt panels for the stop or traffic light dress. Uh, just sort of fold that over and then figure out the square from that. But because this satin is kind of slinky and doesn't want to sit smoothly, I decided that was probably not the best way to go. Um, so what I'm going to do is lay this back out. Sorry for the close-up of my hand there. Um, I should have just left it laid out because it doesn't like to sit flat when I'm trying to make space for myself and for uh, fabric. So once again, double check, I've got my 22 inches here. Make a nice mark, 22 inches here. I know I marked it 23, but I'm measuring from the one spot because once again, I don't trust the end of my tape measure because it's got that metal tab on it, which isn't seated quite straight. So once again, 22 here and then Make sure that that is 22 vertically. And then I don't have a yardstick, so what I'm going to do is use my cutting mat to be a straight edge for me uh, and try to make sure that the fabric isn't too badly warped in any direction because that would uh, obviously not make a very nice square for us. And you, I know that you can't see the uh, fabric marker very well on the camera, but I do promise it is making a nice blue line just visible enough for me. Okay, so then I get that cut out, and I'm very happy that I have my nice black shears because the silver ones would have snagged on this all over the place, and that would make a mess of satin. Um, and I know you could probably just snip and rip this on the horizontal, but I'm not going to trust that for this because I do need as close to a perfect square as I can get. So then once I've got that, I match up the corners and edges, and then I'm going to cut this in half diagonally. And this one, um, I am going to trust the fold in the fabric for. I know maybe I shouldn't, but... It's the quick and easy way to do this. So once you've got your two halves of the square, you're going to lay them out to make sort of a lopsided diamond shape like this. Um, and then pin those edges together. And you want to leave that little bit of overlap um, so that the corner sticks out for your seam allowance. So that ideally where you start sewing, the fabric actually meets up perfectly. And then once you have those sewn together and you have your seam pressed out nice and open, I'm gonna use my what's left of my see-through ruler. It used to be 18 inches, but sadly it got snapped in half uh, when I knelt on it. So, um, but I do like to use this because I can see exactly where two inches in is. And uh, that saves me having to measure in the two inches, mark it, and then draw the line from that. It's just a little bit more, uh, I feel like it's a little bit more precise. So 
So once I have this drawn in, I'm going to use the line that I'm drawing right now to guide my next line, which I know copy of a copy, it's not going to be exactly perfect. I don't really need it to be exactly perfect because this is bias tape, so it has a little bit of wiggle in either direction anyway. Yeah, just get it lined up on the line that you just drew and start on your next one. And then once you've drawn in your final line, you're going to go all the way along that last line and see if it actually is two inches. Um, because I was working with 22 inches, it should be, but if you see any discrepancies that might need to be trimmed, you can do that. If it's less than two inches, then you may just want to trim off that whole outer line. Um, but it looks like I'm actually pretty good here. So the next step is to match up. Uh, you're going to offset these rows. So you want to have one row that hangs off the end, and then you want to kind of match up that uh, corner seam that you have there with the um, first actual drawn line. And again, you do also want to make sure to keep in mind that you're going to have a seam allowance here. So um, where the lines cross should be about whatever seam allowance you're using um, in from the edge of the fabric. So if it's 5 eighths inch, if it's half an inch, uh, kind of estimate that far away from the edge. And then as you pin, double check that you're pinning through both lines. So it's kind of making an X on either side of the fabric. And just continue like so until you have vaguely a tube shape. And once you have that sewn and pressed open once again, uh, you can take that tube and uh, start following the line. Either end works, whichever works for you. And you're just going to cut and it's going to be one long spiral all the way through. So uh, like I said, this is a no waste method for doing bias tape. It uses the entire square fabric, which in this case was 22 square inches. Um, very little gets thrown away. I usually do wind up tossing one end or the other or both, but um, yeah, you can just sit here and cut and cut and cut. And if you were brave, you could actually use a rotary cutter for this. I would recommend turning the fabric inside out so that you're cutting on the bottom instead of uh, on the top like I am here. And um, I haven't personally tried that. I, I don't have a lot of love for rotary cutters, which I know is the hot take of the season because everyone loves a rotary cutter except for me. Um, but yeah, just keep going till you reach the end. And once you do reach that end, uh, you will see what a long and lovely collection of bias tape you suddenly have with almost no waste at all. It just goes on and on and on. Which means now it's time to attach it. Um, so I'm going to start with the side edge on the vest. Um, which goes down from where it ties to the hemline. I am attaching it to the outer fabric um, face in, so right sides together. And I know a lot of people with bias tape will do the quarter folds first. So you fold the edges in and then you fold all of that in half. Um, I like to leave it unpressed because it gives me more control over exactly how wide I want it to be which usually happens to be my standard seam allowance because I can just sew right along that edge and call it good. Um, so yeah, just make sure it's nice and flat and pin it all the way down. And once you've got that sewn, you're going to uh, match up this, the raw edges on the inside and fold it back over to the inside. And that just gives you that nice clean bias tape edge. Um, I always like to make sure that the edge on the inside overlaps the stitch line from the outside just a little bit. That makes it a lot easier to make sure that your, um, when you sew it, if you wanted to top stitch it or stitch in the ditch it instead of hand sewing it, uh, you would be able to catch it all very easily just by following that original stitch line. Uh, 
this once again will be hand sewn, but we're not doing a stitch and chat for it this time. Um, just because we've already done one of those recently, not a lot has changed since then. Um, and it would basically be the exact same stitch with the exact same materials, so not a lot of interesting things to do there. But once again, you're just going to keep pinning all the way down to the end and then uh, get that sewn in. And with that first bit of bias tape nicely stitched on, it's time to move on to the neckline piece. Um, this will connect that with the collar and then also create the waist tie for the wrap aspect of the our vest. So at the top here, what I'm going to do is fold over the edge of the bias tape just a bit so that we get a nice clean edge there. Uh, and then that can sit over the raw edge of the collar. And then it's essentially a rinse and repeat from the side seam. Just um, I'm going to extend it far, far past where that first bit of bias is so that we can make a tie. And as with any uh, bias tape that's more than one strip of fabric sewn together, when you do hit seams, you want to make sure that they're going to stay open. So uh, you don't want the seams folded over to one side or the other because that will make a lumpy bumpy look, which no one really appreciates. Um, but then just figure out how long you want the tie to be and cut that end off and you are good to stitch. So uh, once again, once you have that first seam sewn, you're going to turn everything to the inside. You want to match the raw edge of the bias tape to the raw edge of the fabric and then fold over that. And if that turns out to be a little bit too narrow, um, you can always adjust the, where the bias tape edge is, but um, I do not recommend um, trying to fold over the um, fashion fabric edge, sorry. Um, if you did need it to be more narrow, you would trim it down, you wouldn't fold it over. But for the bias tape, you can adjust the fold however you want, which again is why I don't press it into fourths first. So you saw a little bit of a struggle there getting that fold to sit nicely at the very top. Um, but yeah, until you get down to where that tie is, it's pretty much rinse and repeat. So here we are at the end of the actual fabric part. I want to make sure that the raw end of the first bit of bias tape is actually enclosed by the bias tape I'm applying right now. And then from there, the rest of this is going to become the tie. So <laughs> once I do a little bit of finagling here to make sure everything is sitting the way that I want it to, uh, what I'll do is fold this Essentially, this is where it's just like you would do bias tape. Um, I'm going to fold it so that the two raw edges meet in the middle and then fold that in half and pin it in place. And you can see my pins here are going the other direction. Um, that's just the only way that I feel like I can hold this securely. But again, this just continues until you reach the end of your fabric. And once you do reach that end, what you're going to do is fold the very end in. So before you fold either of the sides in, you fold the end, and then you fold the edges just like you have been doing. Uh, but you want to try to make sure that none of the raw edge is showing on the outside, and also that your ends are nice and even so it gives a nice tidy appearance. Uh, then you just need to pin that in place and you'll be ready to sew. Sometimes I do the pin uh, perpendicular to the other pins, and um, but yeah, ready to go. Nice and smooth. And there you have it. One side is complete. Look at that nice and tidy bias tape edge. And then the tie itself did get a little bit wobbly. I figured that was going to happen, but that will get better with pressing it out. And then with that done, it's time to move on to edging the sleeves. I did wind up taking the sleeve in a little bit, um, just taking it down at an angle to um, make it a more human shoulder shape, because for some reason I decided to cut those shoulders straight out instead of angled, which very few humans have 
shoulders that come straight up from the neck. I did wind up having to cut more bias tape for this, but it's, you know, as you saw, it's a fairly simple process for that. Um, so once again, we're just pinning all the way around and um, that's actually going to give me a measurement for um, sewing this into a circle because I don't want to have that weird overlap thing here that's a little bit more bulk. It would be right under the arm and that's not really comfy for anyone. So it's a little bit more work, but I am going to pin this on, pin it around and see exactly how much I need before creating that circular, circular tube and uh, using that to edge the sleeve with. And then here, as you can see, I've got that circle uh, sewn on and there's that nice seam so that it's going to be fairly flat and not four layers of fabric all at once. Um, so yeah, then it's just another case of turning that all to the inside, which I'm gonna turn the sleeve inside out to do that, um, just to make it easier to work with. Make sure that your seams are laying flat open instead of to one side or the other, and just do that double roll and pin as usual. But these I'm pinning from, uh, oh, make sure you got nice sharp pins too. Uh, pinning from the inside because once again this is going to be hand tacked down. And I apologize for the vertical video but here she is in all of her finished glory. You can see the shoulders still stick up a little bit but I think that adds to the elfiness of it. Uh, nice tie in the back. It still needs to be pressed because I still have that crease from where the fabric was folded. But otherwise, I'm very happy with it, and I hope that my gifty will also be pleased. And I failed to record footage for an outro, so please enjoy these photos of my cat, while I remind you to please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Um, if you like what you see and would like to help me make more costuming and more videos, then please check the description for links to my Ko-fi and my Patreon. They're new, so I I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing with those yet, but I do appreciate any and all contributions towards the art. Uh, I hope that you have a wonderful week and go make beautiful things.